In case she's watching, I, Katie, I will debate you on a stage. I will debate you in a parking lot. I will debate you in a library. I will debate you in a bar. I will debate you in a car. I will debate you on CNN. I will debate you on MSNBC. I'll even... I'll even debate you on The View and let Joy Behar and Whoopi ask the questions. All right, guys. So we got to talk about the cackling hands on The View who were debating the fact that there appears that there won't be a debate between Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake, uh, two of the candidates that are running to win the uh, governor seat in Arizona. Katie Hobbs, Democrat, Carrie Lake, the Republican. Katie Hobbs has been openly running away, right? Scared to debate Carrie Lake. And we all know why she's afraid to debate Carrie Lake. But what I want to talk about here is the views reaction to why Katie Hobbs won't debate Carrie Lake. And again, it is so obvious why Katie Hobbs won't debate Carrie Lake that even the view, even the view is roasting Katie Hobbs for chicking out of debating Carrie Lake. Now, I'm going to play this clip. Uh, I got to tell you guys, <laughs> there's still some obvious bias here, okay, in this clip. But if you listen to what they're actually saying, they are, in fact, roasting Katie Hobbs for refusing to debate Carrie Lake. Take a look. Still get answers to serious questions, but I'm most interested in the debate that didn't take place, which is Arizona gubernatorial race. You have Carrie Lake, a known election denier, up against Katie Hobbs, the Democrat. Yeah. They were both on CNN yesterday, and Dana Bash actually did the job, I think, of CNN of what voters need to see, which is asking questions of the Democratic candidate. I get not wanting to elevate election deniers, but at the same time, Carrie Lake is on the ballot. Katie Hobbs needs to debate her. Katie it's, Hobbs didn't debate her own Democratic. Right, uh, right. Yeah, the person she was up against and anyway. What, what I worry yeah. about is, is a lot of Democrats are rightly saying we're concerned about the future of democracy, yet many have put money behind nominate or trying to boost election deniers and then going on the other side to not debate them. That's a huge problem. Well, I think it's a problem, though, if you're going to debate someone that is going to spread misinformation, lie. But you like Tersha Walker. I, I said he did better. I didn't like him. I think he did better than expected. But I think um, election denial is a different thing. But that's not and why. That's not why she's. That's not why Katie Hobbs is not debating. Katie Hobbs is not debating Carrie Lake because Carrie Lake was on TV for 22 years and is very good on TV. And Katie Hobbs seems not to be. If Katie Hobbs mm -hmm. was an able debater, because remember, Sonny, what's a debate going to be? It's not just going to be about the election. Yeah. That's going to be one question, and you they can fight about it. But and they also hard. need to answer, you know, about the inflation. They need to answer about Policy. the economy. But they need no, to answer no about climate being change. Governor, if she can't they, answer it's that. Arizona. Well, I don't know. I don't know if she has yeah. no business being governor. I think we need to maybe make uh, some kind of conversation about what what the what you should be able to talk yeah. about and what you shouldn't be able to talk about and how you are supposed to be acting when you're with each other. Yeah. And if, since this woman is so much like uh, you know who. I'm sure that she's the, the other lady saying, you know, people know this woman, they know her thing, yeah. and it's, I can't talk about what I need to talk about because I have to deal with how you think I look and what you think I smell like. You know what I mean? But she I didn't think even it's just that her kind own, of thing. Her own I mean, Democratic you know, person, even so it's if, not yeah. a fair comparison. But even if yeah. you look at the Marjorie Taylor Greene debate, I hope some of you did, <laughs> I mean, it was like a clown show. I couldn't believe it. And it was, there was the denials going around I, and the lines. And I think that's why, you I know, think it we was have worth to make, doing, though. I think so. We have I to go make back a, to what I said a, a few weeks ago. I think candidates owe the voters the respect of debating policy. Agreed. Well, tell them. Yeah. It should be so, a requirement. So, and I have to say, you know, people want you to debate. You need to stand up to this person. And go out and do it. And I just, we have to play this because we're involved minusculely. Take a look. In case she's watching, I, Katie, I will debate you on a stage. I will debate you in a parking lot. I will debate you in a library. I will debate you in a bar. I will debate you in a car. I will debate you on CNN. I will debate you on MSNBC. Even, I'll even debate you on The View and let Joy Behar and Whoopi ask the questions. <laughs> the 
That would be your dream, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, we don't turn people away. Except we if they're election deniers, right? Well, I, no, I think we don't turn de election deniers away either because, as you said, people need to hear where people are coming from. And if that's what... See, this is the problem with it. We have Ted we have to coming give on you, this week. We have to give you I the... I think he's been careful enough. I don't. Not he to wasn't he has just denier. spreading but, all the but, big lie. But, yeah, so before I get into the whole Katie Hobbs thing, I, I want to address the elephant in the room. Alyssa... Farah, right? I think that's her name. Alyssa Farah, the new conservative woman on The View. She is terrible. She is absolutely terrible. Did you guys hear how she started off her, her statement? She said, uh, Katie Hobbs, the Democrat versus the election denier, Carrie Lake. I mean, come on. That's so biased, right? I mean, you're supposed to be the conservative. Okay, but it, it seems to me that The View went out and found the white version of Anna Navarro, right? And they said, hey, you can be on the show, right? We're not going to actually expand and encompass women who have all points of view. We're only going to go as far as, um, I don't know, moderate, right? Because I can't even say that Anna Navarro at this point is even conservative, but we're only going to go establishment Republican that hates Trump, which is the role that... Alyssa Farah is playing, okay? Uh, she needs to, 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 to go, right? She's not good. She's not adding anything to that show. I don't know why they chose her. Actually, I do know why they chose her. Uh, it's because she's not going to push back, right? She's not going to call the cackling hens out on their BS. Like, for example, when Sonny Holston went on her whole thing about the election denial thing, she's acting like, well, we don't platform election deniers. We don't give them a platform. We can't talk to them. And I'm like, just a few weeks ago, you guys had on the chief election denier conspiracy theorist in the Democrat Party, Stacey Abrams. You had her, you platformed her on your show, and you're sitting here talking about how you don't platform election deniers. In fact, uh, Sonny actually confronted Stacey Abrams about her election denial. They have also platformed the affirmative action press secretary, Kareem Jean-Pierre, who is also an election denier. You have hosts on The View who are election deniers, like Anna Navarro, who continuously denies the legitimacy of the 2016 election. Look, I felt, I felt that jo Donald Trump had not been legitimately elected. I thought he'd gotten help from the Russians. Let's talk about election deniers. Here's 150 examples of Democrats denying election results. Oh, wow, look at this. This is from... This is from uh, Joe Biden's press secretary. Reminder, Brian Kemp stole the gubernatorial election from Georgians and Stacey Abrams. Democrat saying that. Is that an election denier? Oh, look at this. Just heard Republican Ryan Costello said it would be difficult for Stacey Abrams to win because she lost her state bid, but yet she's still claiming she never lost. This is outright Hillary Clinton. Trump is an illegitimate president. Is she an election denier? This one says, was the 2016 election legitimate? It now definitely is a question worth asking. That's the Los Angeles Times. So it's okay for Democrats to question elections, but it's not okay for Republicans. It's a crock of BS. Every one of you knows it. We have our freedom of speech, and we're not going to relinquish it to a bunch of fake news propagandists. So don't say and try to tell me that you don't platform election deniers because you do, right? You totally do. But again... It's okay to deny the election if you're a Democrat and you say it's because of so-called racism or Russia, right? Racism or Russia, the two R's, okay? That's the Democrats' excuse that says scapegoat every single time they want to deny an election with false claims that are not backed up by any type of facts or real evidence. So with that being said, that brings me to the actual conversation about Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake debating, in which, you know, if even if the... Liberal media propagandists, the calculating hands on the view, if they are saying that you need to debate, right, then you need to debate, okay? Because Anna Navarro actually was correct in her assessment of why Katie Hobbs refuses to debate. And it's simply because Carrie Lake has been on television for so long. She's so good at communicating ideas. She's so good at rebuttals. She's so good at playing to the camera. She's so good at what she does 
that uh, Katie Hobbs does not want to be embarrassed by Carrie Lake. Again, Katie Hobbs allegedly didn't even debate her Democrat opponent, right? So Katie Hobbs is not a good debater. She's not good at talking about her policies, which, you know, here's the thing. It's fine if you're not a good debater, okay? Everybody's not great at debating. Debating is not really even about, you know, who's right and who's wrong. It's about who can make the other person look the most wrong, okay? Or who can look the most right. I, so I understand that. But still, if you're going to talk about how wrong somebody is, how much of a threat they are to this country, the way the Democrats talk about Carrie Lake, then you need to get on stage and debate that person and to challenge their ideas in front of the world if their ideas are so bad. If their ideas are an existential threat to democracy, which is what Democrats are saying, they actually really don't believe that because they funded Carrie Lake <laughs> during the primary and they actually deny elections themselves. But I'm just saying, if they truly believe that, if this is what you're peddling, you got to get on stage and debate. And when the view, the cackling hands on the viewer saying, hey, you know, this ain't a good look, you know it's not a good look. You know <laughs> that this is not the way to go, right? That um, Katie Hobbs is probably going to lose because she refused to debate Carrie Lake. That will probably be one of the primary reasons why she loses support from Democrats uh, throughout this home stretch of the midterm. But at the same time, part of me is like, well, <laughs> Katie Hobbs, in addition to being shy, not being a great debater, not being a great talker, uh, she also had to defend the Biden administration's policies, right? She had to be associated with the stigma of the Biden administration when it comes to inflation, crime, the border, etc. cetera. And uh, that's probably not <laughs> the road that she wants to go down. Right. Again, which Anna Navarro pointed out, once you get in a, a debate, all these Democrats have the same problem. They all are associated with the stigma of the Democrat Party and, and Joe Biden and how those policies have failed this country. So, yeah, with, with that being said, uh, it seems like the cackling hands are on board with a debate on The View featuring Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake. I would love to see that. That'd be a great platform for Katie Hobbs and Carrie Lake to sit down and have a conversation about the issues, okay? I would love for Carrie Lake to go on the view. I would absolutely love it, okay? that I would have to get my popcorn ready, okay? That would be some very entertaining television, right? So again, I, I, I'm just saying, um, with the mainstream liberal media and the Democrats criticizing Katie Hobbs about this, right? After they funded Carrie Lake because they thought that Katie Hobbs was a shoe in to beat her, just to find out that Katie Hobbs is basically blowing it because she don't want to debate or discuss policies with Carrie Lake. Um, I think the pressure is on, right? She really, really, really needs to have some form of conversation, debate, whatever with Carrie Lake or yeah, it's over for her. It's over for her. Again, when, when the cackling hands and the mainstream media and the Democrats are calling you out, uh, yeah, that's a problem because typically in a situation like this, they would say that, oh, well, she's not worth talking to, right? Because she's an election denier or whatever. And you can tell that that's kind of the angle they wanted to take on the view. But even they think that this is not a good move, right? This is not a good look. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.